Y'all come hang with me. Come hang out with me. Come hang. I'm waiting on you. Hey, Crystal. Come hang. Come spend time with me. Lonnie up in here. Tamiko up in here. Harriet up in here. Zariah up in here. Michelle up in here. Opal up in here. Prill up in here. What's up, babies? What's going on? Let's talk. Let's kick it. Shoot, we talking. About being relentless. Brandy, Penny, Tarentia, what's up, baby? Topeka, all my gorgeous people up in the house. Make sure y'all click and sh make sure you share. Make sure you get some hearts if you're on Instagram. We talking. We talking about being resilient. Talking about being tenacious. We're talking about being relentless. And I'm gonna come from several different angles on this deal. Because uh, let me tie it into my stuff. Let me tie it into my stuff. What's up? How you feeling? That workout was horrible, but I did a good job. Hey, Adia. Man, hey, Tosh. So let me give let me give you something good. Let me give you something good. So I get a lot of inboxes. We probably probably get over two hundred either. D I, no, let me take that up. We probably got we probably get like 300 DMs, inboxes, emails every day. <laughs> like every day. And a lot of times when people are starting over or if they're trying to get back into the rhythm or if they want, you know, they want their bodies back or, you know, they want their self-esteem back, their health back, they'll always open up with you know what? I was doing great until, or I was, you know, doing this, that, and the other, but something came up, or but this happened, or but. I always remember this, y'all. Anytime you say something and it's followed by a but, I would have done this, but that but is a signal, and that signal basically says, the but is the lie that you tell yourself that you done bought into. I, I would have done this. I would have gone here. I would have signed up for this. But that's the lie you believe. That's the lie that you bought. That's the accepted. That's the accepted excuse that other people actually accept from you. It's like, girl, I understand, shoot. I would have done that too, but. Now see, their butt follows your butt. And so everybody, everybody just accepts mediocrity except for the people who are hungry for it. See, the people who truly want stuff, there's no but with that. It's I'm going to until. See, there's a difference between but and until. But is based upon emotions. Feel me on that. It's based upon emotions and it's based upon circumstances and it's based upon my out. You see what I'm saying? It's based upon my... It, I'm going to hang in here until... I'm hanging in here. I'm going to do this, but... Oh, I hope to finish this, but... If it don't happen within this time frame, then I'm just gonna quit. If I don't lose 20 pounds in the next day or so, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit. Or I would have done this, that, and the other, but but when you use the term until, but and until two different deals. Until it's kind of like this. I'm gonna stay here until I get my stuff. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hang out in this program until I get what I came for. I'm going to stay in school until I get my degree. You know, I, I'm, 
I'm going to hang out. I'm going to I'm going to start this business and I'm not going to stop until I'm making $100,000 a year or until I'm making a million dollars a year or until I'm making a billion dollars a year. See, there's a difference between but and until. See, until isn't based upon emotions and it's not based upon time. Until basically says, I'm, I'm firm. And I'm not going nowhere until I, until I came what I was seeking. I'm not moving. See, and the, and then when you're committed like that, you, you're going to get your stuff. You always end up getting your stuff because there's no time attached to it. See, our, our generation and our society basically says if it don't happen in a week, if it don't happen in a day, if it don't happen in a year, it, it wasn't meant for you. You see what I'm saying? But when you're relentless, there's no time limit on stuff. There's no time limit on it. It's, it's shoot, I'm, I'm here for the long haul. If you, if, if you look at success, and if you look at some of your most successful people, for a lot of your successful people, a lot of your successful people didn't become quote unquote successful until 20 years in. Look at your look at some of your favorite entertainers. It took them 20 years for the most part. 10 to 20 years before they blew up. Again, I heard the rest of the Stone Cold Steve Austin say one time, it took him over 10 years to become an overnight sensation. It took him over 10 years to become an overnight sensation. He had been going from town to town. Day in, day day out. They travel 300 days out of the year. And it took him years out of doing something basically every day before people knew who he was. But my question to you is, are you willing to grind that hard? Are you that relentless about your stuff? Because this is the thing. Your why needs to be extremely huge. If you're going to succeed in anything, and I'm talking about weight loss, I'm talking about relationships, I'm talking about money, I'm talking about everything. You, you, you got to have a strong why. Because I know within my life, I have had months and years of nothing. And, and again, I was working hard every day. You know, because I've, I've always been taught that if you work hard, uh, you'll produce great things, but nobody, nobody never said, okay, uh, it, it's going to take you two or three years. <laughs> it's going to take you 10 years. But I was always taught that if you worked hard, good things would happen to you. But again, nobody never ever said it's going to take you 10 years, 15, 20 years before you see something. Because I know a lot of y'all right now might be in a situation where you constantly work hard every day and you don't see nothing. You don't see nothing. But see, that's why your why, your why has to be huge. I mean, your why has to be huge because, again, there's going to be some days when people are not going to acknowledge what you're doing. They're not going to give you a high five. They're not going to give you, you know, the great jobs. They're not going to give you the compliment, you know, because if you're on your job, people kind of feel like, you know, that's what you should be doing anyway. You see what I'm saying? But, so there's not going to be any congratulations. But what happens when there's years of no congratulations? When there's years without... Any kind, any kind of acknowledgement. What happens? See, that's why your why has to be so strong. You know, on why you're doing anything in life. You're, because, again, there's going to be times where everything is, is kind of silent. You don't, you know, sometimes you might not be hearing from God. And you're like, dang, Lord, am I doing the right thing? And see, that's why your why has to be strong. Because, again... Sometimes when you're doing great things, you're going to be isolated and you're going to feel like you're by yourself. You're going to feel alone. 
Sometimes you're going to feel like you're traveling this road all by yourself. But that's why your why has to be huge. You have to be tenacious. You have to be relentless. And you have to know why you're doing it. And it has to be a strong why. Because again, if your why is not strong, as soon as you get a little bit of resistance, then you're going to start doubting yourself and you're going to start questioning yourself. How many of y'all have been in that situation where, you know, things get kind of quiet, you start feeling a certain way, and then you start asking yourself, dang, am I doing the right thing? Is this really for me? That's why you always have to have a strong why. I mean, I, I understand, like, these are some of my whys. And, and my whys is different than most. My stuff goes back to me owing the younger version of myself. It goes back to me keeping promises to my younger self. Anytime I see a picture of my younger self, I always say, I owe that joker right there. I owe him. I, that 17 year old dude who said he was going to do X, Y, and Z. I still have to maintain. I still have to keep those promises as an adult to my younger self. So when things are not going right, when things are not flowing, when I feel overwhelmed, when I feel like, dang, this is too much. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I got too much stuff going on. Dang, I got to put out fires over here. Man, is this worth it? Then I go back and I think about my younger self. I see pictures of my younger self and I'm like, it reels me back in and it's a big enough why to keep me where I'm supposed to be versus drifting off because drifting off gets a lot of people in trouble. Drifting off gets a, drift, if you're not careful, that drifting part will get you. You can't, you got to stop drifting and you got to reel yourself back in. Because I've known a lot of people, I've known a lot of people who, whose boats have just sailed away. It, it was tied to the dock. It was tied to the dock, but then the, the storm came and then all of a sudden everything just, boom, got loose and then it kind of floated away. It never was able to, to be reeled back in. The current never brought it back in. And that's how you have to look at your life. Anytime you start to feel yourself floating or sinking, you got to reel yourself back in. Why am I doing this? Why are you doing it? What's, your, what's, the, real pur what's the real purpose? And is it big enough to maintain you even when you're feeling at your lowest and your loneliest? Is it strong enough to hold you and to bound you and to keep you where you need to be? Until certain storms pass over. That's why your why has to be strong. And it has to grab you. Because if it don't, you'll be like the boat. Load away. Just current never brings you back. Because you over there drifting. You over there drifting. And you have people in your life that will help you drift away from your destination. You have people who hope that you don't reel yourself back in. That's why you just have to be. I'm telling you. You have to be focused and you have to be relentless. You got to go after it. Like your life depends on it because it does. Your life does depend on it. Your, your success depends on your focus. Because if you're not focused, then you live a life to where when you get to the end of your life, you're like, hey, I sure wish I would have accomplished this. I... Dang, I, I know had I just stayed focused a little while longer, I could have achieved that over there, but I was too busy drifting. I was too busy drifting. My why wasn't strong enough to maintain me. So I, I drifted off. Be relentless, y'all. Be relentless. Go after it like you deserve it and go after it like you're actually going to do it. Like you're actually going to win. Because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sports guy and I'm a competitive person. And you have to look at your life in terms of wins and losses. At the end of your life, 
The only question I want you to ask yourself is this. Did I win or did I lose? Did I win or did I lose? Did I stay focused long enough to, to see what was on the inside of me in front of me? That's the magic question you got to ask yourself. And then if you start thinking like that, then you start living life a little bit more passionately and a little bit more aggressively versus living your life so passively like you got all day. Did I win or did I lose? Did I, did I, did I get to see, did I get to live the life that I, that I knew I deserved? Did I live where I wanted to live? Did I drive what I wanted to drive? Did I help who I wanted to help? Did I help the amount of people that I, I knew I, I could help if I got my stuff together? Did I live life abundantly or did I live check to check? Did I live just enough? For myself. You hear me say this all the time. Being broke and poor is the most selfish thing you can do. Because the only thing you can do. Is for you. You can't give nothing to anybody else. That's why you always hear me talk about abundance. And just living life ridiculously. And on a bigger and grander scale. Because again when you, when you live bigger. You can do more. And you can give more. And you can just do whatever you want to. Versus if you're struggling. And you've gotten used to struggling. Then you can only do so much. That's why you have to live life aggressively. So again, go after your stuff. S stop settling. And I'm, when I say settling, I'm talking about all phases of your life. I'm talking about from how you look to how you date to what you drive to how you live. Because uh, again, you just you you just ain't gonna settle on one phase of your life. It's kind of like discipline. If I'm undisciplined in one area, I'm not just going to be undisciplined in one area. I'm going to be undisciplined in several different areas of my life. It's just not confined to one area of my life. Time to reel that thing in, y'all. Time to reel that thing in. So, thank y'all for hanging with me, but, you know, it's time to start living life bigger. It's time to start living... Being obsessed with seeing your stuff. And you will hear me talk about this all the time because it's that important. Be obsessed. Go after your stuff. Because at the end of your life, the only question I want you to ask yourself is, did I win or did I lose? That's what's real. Love y'all. Have a great one. Thank y'all for hanging.